All right, it's the morning after the 49ers 33-19 loss to the Ravens here in the marina, and Kyle Shanahan has just finished his conference call update. It's still too early in the day to have firm updates on the players who were injured last night. Brock Purdy, obviously, with the stinger. Kyle Shanahan expects that he's going to be okay and ready to go for Washington, but you've got Trent Williams with his groin injury and Aaron Banks with the turf toe. So 49ers are going to be waiting on information today as testing comes back remember it's a short week they're gonna have to turn around and head to washington that game is on sunday and it's already tuesday so the 49ers are actually going to get started a little bit later tomorrow with practice so that they can get full recovery in kyle shanahan today went through what you know he thought was the biggest issue yesterday and it was exactly what we were saying after the game the 49ers just turned the ball over way too many times you're not going to beat a good team in the nfl very often if you turn the ball over five times you know it reminded me that the whole five turnovers of 2019 week three against pittsburgh and the 49ers actually won that game and we all talked about how exceptional that win was because you don't usually win with five turnovers but that 2019 team was exceptional and guess what the 2019 steelers we're not a historically good team by DVOA like these 2023 Ravens are. So basically what you saw yesterday is the 49ers put themselves in a completely untenable position. You hear Kyle Shanahan talk about Brock Purdy's interceptions and his analysis is exactly the same what our instant reaction was yesterday. The first one was the truly bad decision the next three were unfortunate. The Shanahan literally said it today. The second one, corner made a great play on the screen, right? 49ers checked out of the run play and ball was tipped high into the air, intercepted by the opposite corner. Next interception was a 50-50 ball. This one, I have a little bit more problem with it than Kyle Shanahan does because I don't think that Brock Purdy should be throwing a 50-50 ball with flags laying on the field. They're obviously flags on his offensive linemen so there was no upside in trying to force a pass there but still it was a 50 50 pass that george kittle didn't extend his arms for and the defensive back did his did extend his arms for so you're gonna have to win 50 50 balls against a, a defense as good as the ravens and the 49ers didn't win that and then the last pick well that one was uh <laughs> brock Purdy got hit as he threw the football he made the right read he was going to an open Christian McCaffrey underneath and he got hit. So the ball went straight to the defensive back. It happens. 49ers weren't able to overcome all those mistakes. They actually entered the game leading the league in turnover differential. They led the league with the fewest giveaways and the most takeaways. And they've dropped to number seven and number 10 respectively in those two categories after just one game. But the point is that it's not in their DNA this year to lose that badly in turnover differential. It was a one game thing against the really good Ravens team. Brock Purdy makes a better decision on the first interception after the two explosive plays to George Kittle if he decides to just continue going through his progressions, check it down instead of forcing the Debo Samuel when Kyle Hamilton picked off that ball. There's a good chance the 49ers score a touchdown and this whole game goes completely differently. Stuff in the NFL can unravel or it could balloon into something good depending on what happens early. And what happened early in this game broke against the 49ers and then other, other stuff ended up breaking against the 49ers. If they play Baltimore again this season, which would obviously be in the Super Bowl, the 49ers would likely be favored again. This result that happened last night at Levi Stadium would not change that. So that's the important perspective to keep in mind. And that's what Kyle Shanahan was saying today. It's, it's, it's a loss. Losses happen in the NFL. You've got to fix the issues. And in this particular game, the turnovers were the issue and you got to move forward. Now, two things and I addressed these a little bit last night and I'm just now delving into the game film so I'll have more details for you about these two things later but 
offensively, to me, and, and this came out of the Ravens locker room, Brock Purdy is such a good anticipatory thrower. We saw the Ravens do a really good job sitting on his anticipatory throws, especially the short anticipatory throws. Purdy was 9 of 11 on intermediate passes, with one of the misses being the, the pick to Kyle Hamilton, which obviously was so damaging early. But he was only 4 of 14 on short throws. So you have to give the Ravens a whole heck of a lot of credit for sitting on those short throws, especially the anticipatory ones. I knew that it might be a good day for the Ravens defense on the very first slant to Kyle Juszczyk, where it really looked like he got interfered with. He thought he got interfered with, uh, but nothing was called. But you could tell the Ravens were trying to sit on the anticipatory route on that slant. And they did so many more times, including on the screen that turned into the deflection and the second interception. So when a team is defending spot like the Ravens were, Brock Purdy is throwing to a spot because he's, you know, like Tua. He's such a good anticipatory thrower. When a team is doing that, it you know, the, the fix is the, the QB is going to have to go through at least one more read. Kind of like Brock Purdy said about his interception to Kyle Hamilton. He needed to go through one more read. He couldn't force the ball downfield. So these two teams play again. That's the adjustment the 49ers can make to be better. They didn't pass too much or run too little. They set themselves up nicely with explosive plays. They outgained Baltimore. They were better efficiency-wise in yards per play. They just, <laughs> they just didn't take care of the ball. And sometimes it was due to some great Ravens plays and, and bad luck, but they didn't take care of the ball at the crucial junctures to be able to leverage that yardage and efficiency advantage into an advantage on the scoreboard. On the other side, the Ravens did leverage what they were doing offensively and to an advantage on the scoreboard. And you heard Nick Bosa talk about it. I wrote about it in The Athletic. You can go ahead and check out the article. But Bosa talked a lot about Lamar Jackson actually surprising the 49ers by bailing the pocket so much. And to that, I have to say, maybe the 49ers overthought things a little bit defensively because I get it that Lamar has been operating from the pocket a little bit more often this season, but you can't be taken aback. You can't be taken by surprise when he runs. I mean, it's Lamar Jackson of all quarterbacks. Little intel note, 49ers played Jason Verrett five snaps yesterday. They are planning to work Verrett back into the fold. Maybe a little slot corner action for Jason Verrett this year, but that is a story of true perseverance. Coming back from two Achilles tears and two ACL tears, the most recent one was an Achilles tear at 49ers practice last year. They're planning to play him four to eight snaps. Jason Verrett got five snaps in yesterday, so that's gonna progress. They played him over Sam Womack yesterday. Womack was not active. 49ers can use all the bodies they can get at any position, I think. You know, you, you want to be as strong as possible roster-wise, and Jason Verrett does make the 49ers stronger. He did give up that touchdown catch there to Nelson Aguilar, but you have to keep everything in context. This A lot of people thought he was just going to retire after that Achilles tear last year, his fifth or sixth season-ending injury. But Jason Verrett back out there, inspiring the 49ers, who still have everything in front of them. It's a loss, not, not anything more than that. It's a loss that uh, didn't really match the 49ers DNA due to all those turnovers. They had been number one in both turnover categories entering this game. They are obviously terrible last night, but fluky stuff happens in the NFL. And you got to give the Ravens credit for, for making that fluky stuff happen. It's a game, it's a season of adjustments and counter-adjustments, and the 49ers are busy starting to make those right now.